this is Enrica. So what I generally do when I color correct uh, in even in After Effect is I go and save first uh, an image of the video and, and take it into Photoshop and do some finagling in Photoshop with curves and actually play with it before I even get into um, After Effects. So how do you do that? I'm going to show you the whole process. Uh, so you want to go under Composition and you want to say Save Frame As Photoshop Layers and you call it, you know, I already have it here as timer. I did it earlier, you know, when I was color correcting before. So I'm going to say, you know, cancel because it's already there. Uh, then I grab it, I open it in Photoshop, and I want to show you what I do in Photoshop. So what I generally do is I go in, the most powerful tool to color correct is curves. Uh, now, this image is really pretty darn good, by the way. If you go in, uh, for example, levels that we will have to do anyway in uh, um, uh, After Effects. The level shows you how is the distribution of the spectrum in uh, your image. And you, you can see that the, the darkest point and the lightest point in Photoshop are matching the darkest and the lightest one in um, your video. So the level seems pretty darn good. Uh, so what I often do is I go and uh, open up the curves. And in order to find out exactly what's going on with curves is I actually set the lightest points and the darkest point in the curves to be different than the default. Because the default uses for the darkest point, I'm going to double click, generally 0, 0, 0. Sorry, it's already changed here, but I did this work like a few days ago. Um, so generally, this is the default for uh, Photoshop. What it means is that it basically Photoshop generally gives an RGB of 0, 0, and 0 that is stark black. In nature, rarely you have, in fact, if you talk to a photographer, they'll tell you that 95% black is as far as you can go. So what I generally do is I put, let's put 30. I generally put 30 or 40 in here. And what it will create is basically creates an off black. You see that? Now the black is not as dark. It's a little bit, you know, better. It's a little bit more similar to nature. So I'm going to say, okay. And it's asking me, do you want new, the new default to be saved? I'm going to say, OK. I do the same one with the lightest point. The generally, by the way, is 255, 255, 255. Let me show you. Again, it's changing my setup because I already did it in the past. So here we are, generally stark white, right? But what you do is you go in there and say, OK, let, let's put 245, for example. So a little bit off white, same, same reason. There's nothing in nature that is, you know, perfect white uh, in, in, in photography, at least. In fact, it's a little bit too too bright, but let's actually leave it as it is. Let's, let's say OK. It's going to ask me to save the default. I'm going to say OK. So now I need to localize the darkest point and the lightest point in my image. And the way you do that is I'm going to close my curves, and I'm going to go in and actually, sorry, I'm going to, I don't know why I have the levels in there. I'm going to be in here and choose uh, Threshold. Let me find it right here. And what Threshold does is it floods the image with black and whites only. And what I do is I first go all the way. I flood everything with white. And I can see with light, sorry. And I can see that the darkest point is right here. So how can I mark it? If you go under the eyedropper in Photoshop, there's something called Color Sampler Tool. And you can go in there and basically click. And you can see that now I got that's the darkest point in my image. I go back into my thresholds, and this time I do the reverse. I flood everything, and by the way, sometimes it's kind of nice to move them out of the way, because for what I know, sorry, I'm gonna, there it is. That's actually the reason why I did that is because I knew that the lightest point, as you can see, when you flood it all with black and then take this lighter a little bit in, you see that the lightest point is about here, right? And remember, it's hard sometimes to click unless you zoom in but you can always reposition this. But what I generally do is I zoom in, go back into my color sampler, I go in here and click. So now I have the lightest point and the darkest point. In fact, this one is a little bit on the low end. So I'm gonna move it. You see, it turns into a little arrow that you can move it up, perfect. So now I don't need the threshold anymore. I'm gonna actually turn it off. And I know now what's the darkest and the lightest point in my image. So then I go into curves. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I mean, when it doesn't, it's because the image is really already pretty good that I had already told you. So when you go in curves, then it shows you the RGB composite. Now, it's showing you a better, does a much better job than, than levels here. It shows you that there is a little bit of the, the spectrum starts really a little bit in. 
But what I generally do in curves is I simply take the lightest point and darkest point. This is the darkest one. So I grab that, the black point, and I click on here. And you'll see that your image starts changing. And at first it doesn't change for good, because right now we actually just set one. Now I'm going to go to the lightest point, and I'm going to click right here in the middle. And your image got a little bit darker. And then you have to find the medium gray. And for the medium gray, you generally just have to have a good eye for it. I mean, you could have, we could have marked it into the image before. But what I generally do is I look and I say, okay, this is a dark gray. This is quite light. This is in between those two, right? And this one is a little bit lighter. I think in between uh, uh, the two is, this one is pretty good. Also, this down here is pretty good. I'm going to click on here and see what happened. So now the image turned a little bit warmer. I don't know if you noticed that. It got a little bit more, not pinkish, but it's not as, as a cool gray anymore. So now I close it. And then I'm going to show you what happened. That is why I had that levels in there, because this file I had already played with. Now if I go in levels this time, the spectrum, do you remember when I told you that in curves on that left side, I could see that the spectrum wasn't perfect? And that the original levels didn't show it to us, but it did, it does now. So what I do is I tuck this all the way in, and now my image is as pretty bright as it gets. So that's one way to go. Bright means the best it can be because you really focus on the light, the dark, the midtones. You really kind of did it in a more scientific way, I would say, or a more methodical or practical way, instead of eyeballing things, right? So that's kind of one way to go. And, and so what I do is I generally kind of look first at what does the image, the best possible image is, suppo is, is gonna supposed to look like. And, and that's kind of what I do first. Then I dive into After Effects, right? So I go into After Effects. Now, by the way, there are ways that you can actually set a preset, create a preset of that work I just did in Photoshop. Uh, but oftentimes, if you have a pretty good, you basically now have a target image. Do you see that? This image and this, this, these two images are fairly close. I feel like the big difference is that this one, because of that midpoints that I did in the curves, it has a little bit of a warmer tone. And sometimes I even wonder if I like it better or worse. Because what I don't like of this image now is that this building is a little bit too pink for me. I don't like pink that much. Color correction, by the way, is quite personal. I'm sorry about that, but that's kind of what it is. I do not like the pink too much. So what I might just do is finagle with the le levels and a little bit of highlights and shadows. So that is what I was telling you last time when we talked about what I did to this image. So what I did is I went into effects right here. And uh, first of all, I went into levels. Sometimes it's kind of a good idea to do, um, sorry, color correction, auto levels and see what happens. Sorry, color correction, auto levels. Because sometimes it really does some improvement. You notice in this case, this did barely anything, right? It did a tiny shift. I could see it. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it on, on the YouTube video or the video I'm going to send you in a minute. Um, but I first do the auto levels. Then I generally, I like to always go and do a little bit of shadow and highlights because that kind of helps. So I'm going to go in shadow highlights. What it does is it darkens the, the dark color. So you see that right now in the shadow highlights, if you have the auto, what it did, it brightened everything. That is actually not too bad. I remember I didn't like it the first time we did it. Um, so you could uncheck the auto amounts. You see that? I could uncheck it. And then I could go in and say how much shadows I want and how much highlight I want. For a matter of some simplicity, I actually don't mind that. It looks like it, it, it did a pretty darn good job. Now, what I also do is I generally go to the beginning of the video, at least that's what I did when I did it the first time, and zoom onto you. So what I do is I go and zoom into the area where you are, is up there, there it is, and kind of look at, at you know how it looks up there. So the shadow highlight, again, you can uncheck it here and then go in and say, okay, I want, a, obviously you don't need as much, you know, too much highlight. You definitely might need a little bit more shadow. And you can see that you have to kind of wait for my computer to process. It takes a long time. I'm not too stoked about that. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually leave it to the default. Why don't you leave the default of the shadow and highlight? Because I don't think it's actually bad at all. And then what I did, I did a third one, because once I did the shadow and highlight, it did mess up the spectrum for levels. So I'm gonna go right now, and I'm gonna actually zoom out. So, oops. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go and do the effects right now. Oops, sorry. I got out of the um, effects uh, panel, but I'm gonna go back in. I'm gonna go in color correction. Now remember what I did that was actually um, good is at the very end, I did levels, but individual. 
And the reason why it mattered at that point is it because, and again, we should probably first and foremost zoom out so you can get a bigger, a better picture of what we're doing. Sorry. There we are. There we are. Um, so what you want to do is kind of at this point, what we might want to do is do a little bit of tweaking with the midtones. That's the only thing that I remember. That's why I went into here. So again, sorry, my computer should do a lot faster and better, but it doesn't. So this one, I lightened everything up a bit. And this one, I darken everything up a bit. Let me see. Yeah. And I liked it much better darker. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to actually go and look at this image compared to the one that I created in Photoshop. Like then the one in Photoshop, what I wasn't too stoked about was um, the pinkish tone. And as you can see, this one has more like that um, neutral gray, more than the warm gray. Uh, the warm gray means the, the kind of more pinkish gray. Oh, oh, what happened to the, oh, sorry, I just grabbed, sorry, I just realized I grabbed the video without the ruler. I'm super sorry about that. I just realized I'm doing this all, uh, but you see what I did. I basically went into levels at first, then I went in shadows, a highlight, and then I went back into levels and just darkened it up a little bit. And again, that one is kind of up to you how much you want to darken it, but I kind of like the, this area is really fairly deep. Um, like they are here. You see that here, these areas are really deep. This one is even a little bit darker. So anyway, those are the three operations I did. I do remember that actually shadow and highlight, I did not take the default and I uh, finagle with the, with the way you finagle is you uncheck and then you go over the number and drag it in one direction or the other to change it. Like you see right now, I'm flooding it with light. Uh, that is not necessarily a good thing, overexposed. Now, if you wanted this much, much, not as dark as it is right now, is um, is kind of one way to go is kind of this. If you preferred it much, much lighter, I kind of like it dark, to be honest. I'm going to actually uh, switch between the two right now. Yeah, I like it better with the auto than going with the 58, this is what I have here. Uh, but, you know, it's pretty much a tango. Uh, so you, how much shadow do you want to give it and how much, you know, and remember what this does, it deepens the darker tones. And then I'm leaving the highlight at zero because I don't want the light to be any lighter. I kind of tend to like it better actually on the darker side. I'm going to actually go back to auto. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it is a little too dark. Let me actually look at Photoshop. So there's a whole lot of tangoing that you do. That is why I do this Photoshop image. Cause then I have kind of a target to what's the best way to go. Sorry. The video is so long. So let me repeat what I would do is I would do an auto levels an auto shadow highlights, and then go back into the levels and just finagle with the midtones a little bit and see how that, that does. It means if you want a tiny bit darker, a tiny bit lighter. Uh, obviously the level, you know, is over the entire, you know, um, image, the, the shadows and the highlight, the shadow darkens the dark and the highlights li lightens the, the, the light. I'm sure you know all that, but I'm just saying, and I'm saying it maybe, you know, without explaining more because I'm, I'm sure you know all that. Um, so just, uh, these three auto level shadow highlight, and then go back into level and tweak the midtones until they look like top notch. Sorry, it took so long.